Hi everyone, thank you for joining our floristry live q and I'm going to now hand it over to our lovely lecturer to answer any of your questions. Uh, hello everybody, um, my name is Julia Hart and I'm the floristry lecturer at Brooksby Melton College. At the moment we teach a um, subsidiary diploma in floristry which takes a year to do. Uh, I don't know if there's any other questions Chaya. Yep so what are the full-time entry requirements for the course? At the moment the entry requirements are if you're a school leaver that you uh, get a, a, a four which is a C or above. If you're a mature learner you can um, you can still get onto the course. Probably we would have a one to one chat with you to uh, tell you a little bit more in depth about what the course uh, entails and see what your hobbies and aspirations are and what you'd like to get out of it so that we can ascertain whether we think that you'd be suitable or that you'd like even the course. Okay. And how long are the full time courses for? Uh, well, at the minute, the course that I'm running is for one year on a Monday and Tuesday. However, that is changing next year to a, let me get this right, a City and Guilds Technical Diploma in Floristry. Now, that isn't set up um, as yet, but that isn't to say that it won't be running. It will, but uh, we will get it set up. So I'm not sure on the days that it'll run or um, how long it'll run, but it's usually about a year. And how many and how many hours a week are we roughly in college? At the moment, the girls are the students are in from 9.30 till 4.30 Monday and Tuesday. However, that would be open to change with the new syllabus. And what will I learn from the course and what are the modules roughly? Uh, the modules that we've done this year are um, you would learn about the elements and principles of design. We do go into that in quite a lot of depth. Uh, we, we've got a funeral unit where you would learn about the um, different types of funeral designs that you, you could make and practice them. We've got a, a hand tied unit, so that's um, making hand tides or um, all different styles of hand ties. We've got an arrangements unit which is in foam, so that's anything uh, for from table decorations to wedding wedding designs. And then there's a conditioning unit where you would learn all the botanical or Latin names of the plants and flowers and how to care for them um, and how to condition them and the different methods of conditioning that you can do. And how will I be assessed? Is it all exam based or is there any coursework? Yes, there's a I will say that there is a lot of coursework um, and it, I think this technical one is going to have 60% where we um, mark your work but through observations and different in different ways and your um, you would have some idents to learn and to uh, test to go through and then at the end the, the other 40% would be um, an external examiner would come in and, and set some tasks for you to do. And we're pretty sure that that's how that would work. And are there any trips or visits on the course? Uh, we haven't had trips obviously for a couple of years due to COVID, but we do normally try to take um, the students to um, a, a flower wholesaler. Um, we have been to Holland um, in the past. Uh, I don't think that would be on the cards for next year, but you know, you never know, do you? And um, when does the course start? Right, the course usually starts the second week in September. So that will be this September coming, probably around about the 14th, but we would let them know, would let you know definitely when it's starting. And can I still do the course if I require additional learning support? Yes, you can. Yeah, you can uh, get extra support. At, well, hopefully you can get extra support if you've got some certification to say that you're entitled to it. 
Um, so yes, you can get support. But however, during the class, we do have a couple of sessions where they're open workshops. And for anybody that wants a little bit more information, we do tend to um, sit down on, as a one to one and go through anything that you're struggling with and, and try and get you on the right track with it. And what happens if I don't pass my GCSE maths or English or if I just miss a grade? If, if you miss the grade and it has happened uh, this year for a couple of, uh, well, for one of my students, you would you would have to do English and maths, whichever one it is you've missed. Um, at college to catch up, really. And how do I apply for the course? Uh, you can apply through Brooksby College on the website. You can click one of their, um, well, I think at the minute that would be the way that you would do it by through the college. Go onto their website and there'll be a, a page that says um, enroll or you, you would uh, fill in the paperwork, send it off and they'd get in touch with you to arrange an interview. And where can this course lead to? Um, well, a lot of people have been doing it 20 years now and a lot of people have got their own businesses through doing the course. Um, some of them are demonstra national demonstrators. You could go on to work on cruise ships if you wanted to or, or in hotels and do some beautiful big arrangements. Uh, you could become a teacher or a tutor. You could do evening classes. So there is there is a lot of things you could become a home worker if you wanted to and do it, um, you know, just for friends. It's entirely up to you, really. And is there any transport? There is transport and uh, once you decide that the course is for you, you can talk to the transport administrator and they'll and they'll tell you what buses are available and uh, all that sort of um, thing. Uh, most of my girls are older, I will say that, so they do have their own cars, but we do have a few that come on the buses. And that's all arranged beforehand, really, so you would know exactly where you were coming to. And is there anything I can be doing to prepare for the course? Well, I would say if you're really interested in floristry, I would uh, I would start to learn some of the names of the flower and plant materials, but make sure that they are florist ones get to know get to identify the um the flower names and the botanical names so that when you come in you'd know what a gerber looks like or you'd know what lysianthus looks like and the common names if you can find out the common names of those that would be a good thing to do read up on them um, uh, i don't know if you can get on the library but watch demonstrations as well on youtube watch um, somebody making a hand tied or see how interested you are once you've watched the demonstrations um, put in um, how to make a buttonhole and somebody will show you how to make one and see if it's the sort of thing that you think you'd like to do. You'd get some tips from that, that sort of thing anyway. And how much can you earn in the floristry industry? I'm afraid when you first get into it, if you're going into a shop, it would be minimum wage. And at the minute, I don't know what the minimum wage is. And then you would have to work your way up. Obviously, if you're going to work for yourself. But however, the course does teach you how to um, price up your designs to a commercial uh, so that you could then work for yourself and charge a commercial price. So it's really how much you want to put into it, to be honest with you. What types of equipment and facilities do you have? At the centre, oh right, we've got a, a really lovely big cooler, which won't sound good to most people, but it's a walking one. We can get uh, two or three people in it and we have about 50 buckets in there with all the different flowers and designs in. And that keeps um, our flowers can go for at least three weeks in the cooler and we usually keep it around 6.5 which will keep our flowers going for quite a while. Um, we've got um, tables that are extra high so that you don't bend, not always bending and having to hurt your back while you're working on the designs. Uh, we've got quite a few, we've got a good library with some uh, lots of floristry books in, ones that you wouldn't be able to get from your library. Uh, we do have a few in the classroom as well. 
there's high stalls that you can sit on so that you're not sitting on, on low chairs. Um, there's racks with tissues and um, raffia and um, cellophane. We've got two store cupboards with all our, what I would say, sundries are in, such as um, baskets and foam, vases. So there's lots, lots there that, that, that we that we use all the while. And how big are the classroom sizes? Um, at the minute, I would I would say 12 fits our classroom quite nicely. So you've got plenty of room to move around, get get your sundries and, and work. You usually have a table each, so I would say 12 in a class. And do I need to buy any equipment for the course? The only, the only thing we ask you to buy, and we would get them for you if you wanted them, would be uh, the floristry scissors. And if you've got your own, you wouldn't have to buy them. That would be fine. But we insist on having you having floristry scissors so that you don't get repetitive strain injury with normal scissors, as these have got wire cutters in and um, they really do cook quite well. So. Um, Proper floristry scissors are around 10 to 12 pound. Uh, the girls um, can borrow an apron from us, which has got Brooksby on it. It's a black apron with Brooksby, so you can borrow that or you can buy one if we've got some there. Um, what else do they need? And then I would say the only thing you would have to buy after that is um, your folders, uh, notebooks, pens, you know, a, a pack of multicolored pens, that sort of thing. So you don't really need a lot for it. Some um, a good pair of scissors. We we have the knives there. There's usually all the materials are provided. I think that's what happens with a technical diploma, that everything is bought in uh, and is included in the course because you can get a, um, a government loan for it, which we get all the flowers and everything and you don't pay anything except for your loan. And can I apply for the course if I'm over 19? Yes, uh, within floristry we do tend to have more uh, out of out of 12 this year. I think we've got two, you know, from 18 to 20, 18 to 19, shall we say, and they usually the majority are over that age. It doesn't tend to attract the, the very young ones into it. It's usually people that's been in industry and want to do something creative, but that, that's not to say that they get treated quite well by the um, others in the class, the young ones do, so they quite enjoy it. And I think we've already answered this one, but are there any mature students currently on the course? Yes, I think this year we've got we've got nine on the course and One's just turned 18 and possibly the oldest one is. Well, this year probably it's in the 40s, but in other years I've had them up to 60, so it just shows it, it is quite a, you know, an age variance course that suits suits a lot of people. And are there any student success stories? Um, if you live in Melton, uh, or near Melton, we've got Sophie's florist. So she's a um, she's a a florist that uh, I taught. We had Elizabeth that was on the um, apprenticeship. She was taught at Brooksby College. Um, but if you go to Syston, there's a, a mum and daughter who work in designer daisies. They've been running that for several years, and and they are both taught mum one year and the daughter another year. Uh, in Melton, we've got uh, Flower Paradise. There's two ex-students in there. So whenever I go out, wherever I go, there's usually somebody after 20 years, you know, in Nottingham, Leicester or surrounding areas that knows me because they're in a florist shop or, or, or whatever. So yes, there's lots of success stories. And what is the college environment like? The college environment, I I mean, the grounds are absolutely beautiful, uh, which we can, we are allowed to pick uh, from the grounds, but uh, it's rural. It's a, a modern centre where we are. It's an, a, like a, a new new building. 
um, so the, the facilities are quite good. Um, we've got hot water and that may sound surprising, but where we used to be, we didn't have hot water. So, you know, we, we've got, yeah, there's a, a communal area where you can meet and have, have your uh, snacks and lunches. Um, hopefully, if you do decide to come on the course and things get better with COVID, you'd be able to come in and, um, and see what it's like and have, um, have a tour around and through the grounds. There's a beautiful church in the grounds that we often get to, to decorate, which um, the students love that. At Christmas, we sometimes, which didn't happen this year, obviously due to COVID, but you, we get to decorate the main um, hall um, in, in, the in the main building, which is a beautiful place. And we decorate the tops of the door lint lintels and the uh, stair banister with the garlands and lights and it looks absolutely beautiful. It is a really nice environment to work. And how much experience do the tutors have? How much experience, sorry, do who have? Uh, do the tutors have on the course? Uh, well, we're both from the, uh, we're both the tutors that are here now, in, that's in, one including me, um, and I was taught at Brooksby, so I've worked in um, Stapleford Park, which is a lovely big hotel and we've made massive designs there. I've done my own business where I, I, I do my weddings from. Um, I'm not doing that now, I'm going to retire. Uh, what else have I done? I've worked in a shop for several years. I've, I've run the shop for several years. The other tutor that's with me now, I taught her and uh, she's got her own business, a floristry, and she uh, it also works within the industry in a florister shop. So we have up to date experience, really. Say, I think between us, we must have about 40 years experience of working um, within the industry. And due to the COVID situation, how are classes currently taking place? Uh, uh, my students have a mask uh, that they put on when they uh, come onto the grounds and they keep it on for the whole day. Obviously, they're going to take it off when they have the lunch, which at the, which at the minute they can eat in the classroom. They don't have to go and uh, mix in the common room. They can stop there. We've got um, we've got gels and sanitizers at each each point. So as a defend, if you go out and come back, we like you to do your hands. Um, the soap. Uh, so it has changed in the way that we probably wouldn't put the girls in groups so much anymore. We'd let them stay at their place at their table rather than put them in little teams to, to work. We just we try to keep everybody separated. So do you usually have um, people in groups working together as in like teamwork to do a particular task if it wasn't for the COVID situation? Yes, when it's um, when it's written work, it, it's nice if you can set a task for somebody and they don't feel quite so um, on their own that they've got to do it. So what we'll do, we'll probably put two or three together and give them a task and different tasks to other groups and, and get you to uh, research that task, you know, for 15 minutes or half an hour. And then you would um, give your findings to the rest of the class, really. So we do do that still, but they're just a little bit more separated, shall we say, and not quite in such a, a little huddle. So would you say that you're very independent on the course or um, do you sort of help students as much as possible? Um, I would say that if we're making, what happens really is, um, say we're going to make um, a hand tied one day, we would demonstrate the hand tied, show you what flowers want when wanted to go in it. Uh, you would make it with our help. The second week you would make it without our help and seeing what you remembered, but we would come round without the demo. I mean, we would come round and help you to get the spiraling technique. And then the third week, hopefully you'd be proficient enough to uh, do it as an observation so that you would um, you would make it without any help from anybody and then you would write about what you would probably please with and what you would change and that you would 
discuss the elements of principles and how you've used them within that design, um, how you would deliver it uh, and package it. Uh, you would learn to price it up so that uh, and choose the right flowers to use within that design, uh, suitable flowers and that you've chosen the right ones and then to work on your costumes really. So that that's how every design that you make is done really. OK, I think that's the end of the session if nobody has any other questions. But if you do, um, please email course inquiries at brooksbymelton.ac.uk. You can also apply now directly on our website, which is www.brooksbymelton.ac.uk. We'd like to thank Julia and thank you to everyone for joining our live Q&A today. Enjoy the rest of our virtual open evening and we really hope to see you soon. Take care, everyone. Bye bye. Bye.